Hello, welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, October 4th. Wow, it's October. Um, my name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the Director of Children and Young Families at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church. Um, and this is our Sunday School recording. Starting next week, we will do a Zoom meeting along with this if you are interested. We will open that Zoom meeting at noon, and it will go from noon until 1230. Um, and I'd love to have you. The information and the, um, the links and the, the meeting codes and so forth will be in the Sunday email next week. We can't do it this week because of communion. That We can't do it the first Sundays because there's just not enough time, and you might want to come to communion. Um, but the message will be exactly the same. So. Um, and our Sunday school lesson is an extension of the children's message that's given in the worship service. Uh, today's scripture reading is Psalm 19, but let's open with prayer. Gracious and loving God, please open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, and open our eyes to you to your work in our world, and to your word. Help us to understand how words that were written so very long ago still have a great deal of meaning in our lives today. Help us to see you at work in our world and in our lives each and every day. Help us to see you in the people around us and to act like we do. Please bless this study and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, remember how a couple of weeks ago we talked about the different types of psalms? There are psalms or songs that are songs of praise. There are songs that ask for forgiveness. There are songs like the one last week that recount a part of the history of the Hebrew people. There are songs that ask for help and songs about what people should and shouldn't do. Let's read Psalm 19, so we can see exactly what we're dealing with. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making, the wise, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, clearly this is a song of praise, but do heavens actually speak or does the sky talk? Of course not. Does the sun actually come out of a tent in the sky? No. 
Do laws or rules ever actually glow, giving light or heat or power? No. But what the poet is doing is helping us to understand how he or she sees God, how he or she understands how big, powerful, and incredibly smart and loving beyond our ability to even understand God is. He or she, the person who wrote the psalm, is painting a word picture. They're writing a poem. Have you ever seen something that was so incredibly beautiful or so awesome that it made you just stop and stare in wonder? We usually think about places outside, and when I think about places like that, I think about the coastline in California from Carmel down to Big Sur. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Or the foothills of the Sierra Madre as they go up into the mountains in the late summer. They're the most amazing gold color with, with green, little dots of green live oak trees. It's, it's amazing. Or almond orchards in the springtime. They are stunningly beautiful. God created all of those things and all of the places that you think are that beautiful and God still cares for them. Have you ever watched really big powerful surf like when there's a storm at the ocean just pounding the shore? It's, it's, it is genuinely awesome. It makes you, it almost takes your breath away. It's so powerful. Or watch a really big bolt of lightning hit the ground. It, you can feel it in your toes. Um, God created lightning and surf. Imagine how powerful God is. Have you ever stared up on a beautiful summer day into that deep blue sky that just seems to go on forever? And if you if you lie on a hill and you lie there long enough and keep your eyes open, it all, you almost get to the point where you feel like you're falling into the sky. It's really neat. Um, or stood out in midwinter looking up into a beautiful, beautiful night sky and see all of the millions of stars just twinkling down on you. God created all that too. Imagine how big God is. Have you begun to learn about all of the little bits that make up our bodies, the, your bones and your, your heart and your lungs and your, all of your organs and, and, your, and your blood and all the little teeny, teeny, teeny cells that make up all of that stuff? Or have you, you ever looked into a microscope and looked at a leaf and seen all of the little green cells in, in a leaf? Well, God created those things too. God is infinite from the teeny, teeny, teeniest little things that are so teeny we haven't even found them yet to the biggest, biggest, biggest things that we can't even imagine. Um, and God brought all those things up and just caused them to be. And that same God who is so big, so powerful, so majestic and awesome loves us, each of us very, very much, and is waiting patiently for each one of us to realize how much God loves us. And not only that, God wants to, to be in relationship with you. He wants you to pray to him. He, he wants you to talk. He 
Malik be called out of heat, that's God. Um, but God wants you to be in relationship with him. Every time I think about that, it just, I, 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 I can't even speak. <laughs> well, if you can think of beautiful, powerful, awesome, good things in your life that you have seen or that you know about that God created, could you write them down and thank God for them? Because, you know, if you do that, you are writing a song. Wouldn't it be fun to write our own book of psalms, the GPC Kids Book of Psalms? So think about it. Think about all of the things that you are grateful for, all of the things that are beautiful and incredible and teeny, 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 and huge, 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 and and strong and weak and everything in between. And how grateful you are that they exist. Write them all down and send them to me and I will create a book of songs for us. I think that would be really cool. So anyway, let's finish with prayer. Good, gracious, powerful, and amazing God, we love you and are always amazed by the incredible things you do. Help us to notice them every day, to thank you for them, and to be good stewards of the beautiful world that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I have said, I hope you had a great week. I hope that you have a great week coming up. I hope you and your families are staying safe and and taking care of each other, um, and staying strong. Keep your masks on. Um, and I hope to see you in our Zoom meeting next Sunday, Sunday the 11th at noon. Take care. Be well.